I'd like to actually move on to our next speaker, if I may. And uh, as a few people came on the call a little later than my introduction, so I'll just go through that again. Um, so I can introduce um, Dr. Jimmy Goodman, who's going to be calling in from Canada. Uh, Dr. Goodman is the world's leading author on books about glutathione. He's the former professor at McGill University Medical School, where he originally, his speciality was emergency medicine, and he now practices family medicine. He was trained at the University of Calgary and did his emergency medicine residency at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, where he was the chief resident. He went on to an accomplished career in Canada, where he was appointed as the undergraduate director and residency training director of emergency medicine at McGill University. He has been an organizer and speaker at multiple national and international medical conferences and has contributed to the training of thousands of doctors and students. Dr. Gutman has sat on the board of directors for the Canadian Association of Emergency Medicine and various other boards dealing with policy and education. An expert on glutathione and the author of several best-selling books on this topic, he is dedicated to seeing the gap bridge between traditional and complementary medicine. He has appeared numerous times on television and radio and in digital media discussing the role of glutathione in health and disease. So I'd like you to welcome Dr. Jimmy Gutman. Are you there, Dr. Gutman? Yes, how are you, Scott? Jolly good, I'm well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. My so, pleasure. Uh, um, I'll let you continue with your presentation as you wish. Uh, do you need to me to share any tech technical side of things here? Or are you okay? Um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and uh, take control of the screen if you'll give me a moment. Let's see if this works. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can find you. Let's, Is that uh, showing? Let me see. One yep. minute. I... From my end, I think people are looking at yep. me. Yes. Can yes, you... that's good. We can see you. Thank you. Good. So thank you for the introduction, Scott. Um, uh, as as uh, uh, Mr. Lucy explained, uh, my passion is about this crazy molecule called glutathione, and I'm going to shamelessly plug my book over here. <laughs> um, I, I, I have been studying this for, for a quarter of a century, and um, they're, they're, uh, you probably want to access this uh, uh, after the discussion, but uh, there are a lot of ways of uh, getting information on, on glutathione, uh, not only through my book, but uh, I do have a, a Facebook page and a YouTube channel that uh, will always have updated information on this rather um, remarkable substance. So um, I'm going to uh, focus uh, on the immune system. Um, I, I know that uh, this is a panel that is looking at uh, healthy aging and of course we need to look at immune function if we're looking at, at healthy uh, aging. So what is the immune system? There's a lot of definitions, but I think probably the simplest one, it's your body's defense system. Um, pretty straightforward enough. And so the question arises, uh, how do you take care of your immune system? Well, um, I think uh, uh, anybody on this call and certainly anybody's grandmother uh, would be able to tell you uh, that uh, to take care of your immune system, uh, you need to eat well, uh, you need to sleep well, you need to exercise, manage stress, and uh, take care of your lifestyle. And we heard uh, uh, many of these suggestions from our previous speakers. Uh, but I think that in the next couple of years, you're going to see uh, it become quite popularized that something else needs to be done to take care of your immune system, and that is to raise your glutathione levels. Um, now, uh, you may or may not heard of glutathione before, um, but uh, it, it, this is something that has received so much attention that um, in the next couple of years, everybody will be using the word glutathione as commonly as they use the word antioxidant. So E12, is that even possible? I think it's possible to try to eat well, I'm not sure that it's possible to really get all the nutrition you need, even if you're going to the farmer's market and getting your produce there. 
Um, do you think for a second that the potato that my mother put in front of me as a child is at all similar to the potato that you're going to find at the market today? And the answer is clearly it's not. And there's a lot of research looking at this. Um, the nutritional value has declined decade by decade uh, to the point where uh, it's clear that we do need to supplement our diets because we are missing things that don't show up in our food because of our agricultural practices or what we've done to the genetics of, of these plants and use of pesticides and herbicides and, and on and on. I think that's uh, something you all understand and accept. Um, what about sleeping well for your immune system? Well, you know, uh, I think uh, the data shows that half of us don't sleep well enough and, and not sleeping well will, will clearly have a negative uh, effect on immune function. How about exercise? Uh, the other sp the previous speaker also talked about the importance of exercise, exercise and food. Those are the one, two punch. You can't beat them for, for being healthy and for slowing down the aging process. And you can't beat them for maintaining a good immune system, except not only is it hard to eat well, but just looking at uh, the habits of, of most of us in the Western world, um, we're not getting enough exercise, uh, probably 25 or 30% of us are not getting any exercise at all. So I, I can only give you a C uh, as a general score. Stress management, well, don't even need to touch that one uh, these days with what's going on in the world. Uh, I think uh, we're all uh, suffering this stress overload. Lifestyle, well, of course, Nobody in North America and nobody in, in the UK, uh, they don't drink beer, they don't eat junk food, and they don't smoke, right? <laughs> Wrong. Okay. So what do you do? You know, we've received kind of middling marks on, on all of these things. What to do? Well, um, this is where glutathione comes in. I think that the uh, raising glutathione uh, becomes very, very important. Uh, let's look at glutathione for a moment. Uh, glutathione... It's something that's already inside of every single cell of your body. And glutathione is already in your body. And it's, it's a substance that uh, literally uh, life would be incompatible without. Uh, glutathione is in our cells, but it's also in the cell of every living organism in the world, from humans to mammals uh, to insects uh, to plant life to microscopic life, it, you, glutathione is a, a, a key defender of our cell. And uh, I, again, if you want to, to, to go online and, and uh, be a little bit masochistic and start reading about this, you're going to be overwhelmed with the amount of information on glutathione. This uh, uh, website I'm showing you here, PubMed, uh, this is a major repository of research uh, in the world. All the, the major and minor journals will, will post their articles on PubMed. And any researcher and any doctor and any scientist uh, know this site well. Every researcher uses this pretty much every working day of his or her life. And there's over 150,000 articles I want to put that in context. Um, there's probably, I don't know, 40, 50,000 on, on vitamin C and probably the same amount of vitamin E. There are more articles on glutathione than there are in vitamin C and vitamin E put together. So I think, I think that, that uh, tells you an important point. So what does this glutathione do for us anyway? Uh, I, could, I could talk about 50 or 60 different things on a cellular level that it does, but I'm going to keep it to four. And if you understand these four, uh, you probably understand 90% of glutathione. And the way to remember these four is to remember the acronym IDEA. Glutathione, what a great idea. Uh, the IDEA stands for immune system, D for detoxification, 
E for energy, and A for antioxidant function. If we look at these in turn, um, just to put it very, very simply, uh, people with uh, low glutathione levels are almost always immunocompromised. People with good immune, uh, good glutathione levels uh, generally have optimized their immune function. Uh, so I tell people to think of glutathione literally as food for the immune system. Uh, D stands for detoxification. Again, these days, uh, uh, even if you're living on top of a mountain, uh, even if you go to the middle of the ocean, you are not going to be able to get away from the toxins and pollutants in the air that you breathe, the food that you drink, and the uh, food that you eat, and the water that you drink. Um, uh, this is a uh, uh, part of living in 2020. And uh, glutathione, um, uh, many of the emergency medicine people know about glutathione because we, we use glutathione to detoxify certain uh, overdoses. But uh, glutathione is also responsible for the detoxification of cigarette smoke and automobile exhaust and pesticides and herbicides and, and heavy metals. And I can, I can flash uh, a, a slide uh, on the screen in, in, a, in a four point uh, that goes on and on and on about the thousands of recognized toxins that depend entirely on glutathione for their removal. So I tell people that next to water, next to water, uh, glutathione is, is the most important detoxification substance we have in our body. And by no coincidence, the highest levels of glutathione to be found are in your liver, which is after all your major organ of detoxification. Energy, uh, but we can keep you here all, all day just talking about energy. Um, just to give you a, a, a little example, um, our cells have these little batteries in them uh, that uh, we, we call mitochondria. Uh, these mitochondria would literally burn up were it not for a constant supply of glutathione. And when glutathione availability becomes uh, impaired, uh, the mitochondria don't function at the level they're supposed to, and we lose energy. And this could be translated into studies on not just um, uh, microbiology or, or, or biochemistry, but into whole uh, body performance, uh, such as Olympic sports. And uh, finally, a, uh, this is the rule that most people who have heard of glutathione recognize glutathione has been considered the master antioxidant. Now, why would you use a term like master antioxidant, which sounds more like a marketing term than a, 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 a scientific term? Um, it's accurate because of the somewhere between two and 4,000 different antioxidants we know of, vitamin C, vitamin E, and hundreds and hundreds of others. None of these antioxidants can pro work properly um, without the presence of glutathione. Glutathione recycles other antioxidants, glutathione recharges other antioxidants. And if you think of uh, antioxidants working with each other like uh, uh, gears in, in a clock, well, um, a clock uh, needs a, a dry shaft, a clock needs a spring. Well, the spring that's driving all of our antioxidant mechanisms in our body is the glutathione system. So with uh, these four in hand, uh, you begin to understand the uh, critical importance that glutathione plays in maintaining a healthy life and uh, a healthy immune system. Problem is that there are so many ways of losing glutathione. Uh, many drugs uh, will decrease glutathione. Uh, eating poorly, clearly, is a source of poor glutathione levels. Uh, when you get injured, when you're traumatized, when you're burned, uh, it's been documented glutathione levels drop. Stress will decrease glutathione. Here's, here's a cute study. Uh, um, they measured glutathione levels in people that practice transcendental meditation, you know, for relaxation. And they matched glutathione levels with uh, uh, 
uh, individuals, the same sex, the same age. And the ones who practice uh, uh, meditation had better glutathione levels. <laughs> so just uh, an indication of, of uh, stress and its effect of uh, lowering uh, glutathione. Infection disease, and this is huge these days, um, I will be uh, giving um, a public lecture uh, at some point in time in regards to uh, glutathione and COVID. Uh, so keep your eyes open for that one. Um, pollution, toxins, uh, the aging process. Okay, this is one that's uh, uh, very uh, appropriate for, for our talk today. Every 10 years of life, you, you, you lose 10% of your glutathione levels unless you're doing something about it. And lowered glutathione levels correlate with the majority of diseases of aging. I'll show you a little chart later. Even if you're trying to take the sun, uh, radiation will decrease glutathione levels. So we need to replace glutathione levels. And how do we do it? Well, you can't expect to eat glutathione and see your glutathione levels go up. Eating glutathione just isn't efficient because when you eat it, it gets broken down in your digestive uh, tract, uh, mostly by an enzyme we call GGT, gamma glutamyl transferase, uh, for you keeners out there. Um, but the, the glutathione is actually, in our body, is actually made in our own cells. So to wait, the way to raise the glutathione levels in your cells is to give your cells the building blocks, the specific nutrition, what we call the precursors, so your cells can make their own glutathione. Um, and uh, those precursors, there's a, a very um, uh, uh, common drug out there called N-acetylcysteine, that is a glutathione precursor, but it, it, it does have some problems with toxicity. And uh, the, the uh, other way to raise glutathione has been recognized in the medical literature, which I am um, been working on for, for over 20 years, is uh, uh, what we call undenatured whey protein isolate. Now, there are certain uh, proteins, uh, when extracted properly from whey, serve as glutathione precursors. Again, very highly studied over, over 40 years of research. And uh, that uh, uh, undenatured whey protein um, has been uh, patented and uh, distributed um, by a company called Immunitech, uh, which has a product called Immunical, uh, which is uh, sold uh, throughout the world. And uh, what Immunical is, uh, are protein precursors uh, that uh, humans can eat, digest. Uh, uh, there's uh, no uh, toxicity related to it. Um, this protein is absorbed uh, uh, into the bloodstream and carried to the cells and the cells make glutathione and improve immune function. And no secret, no black box, uh, nothing that couldn't be explained to even a college um, biochemistry student. So here's uh, just in closing, I'm going to show you a couple very interesting studies. Uh, um, here we see this graph um, and it shows that glutathione levels drop as we age, unless we're doing something about it. And they drop and they drop and they drop. But if you measure glutathione levels in people that are like a hundred years or older, all of a sudden you find that they have high glutathione levels. Isn't that odd? So um, if this was a, a live presentation, I'd ask y'all, why? And every once in a while, somebody gets the answer. And the answer is, that's why they're a hundred years old because they had a genetic predisposition to maintain high glutathione levels. And their friends and their enemies who didn't have high glutathione levels have been selected out of the population. This is natural selection at its finest. Uh, the higher glutathione levels correlate with uh, extensive lifespan. Here's another uh, study. Um, 
for the North Americans listening, um, this is an aging study done in Florida. And I say North Americans understand that Florida is where all old people go to retire. And uh, they looked at uh, elder people and measured their glutathione levels. And they compared them to young, healthy people. Uh, you'll see that the young, healthy people had um, good glutathione levels. The healthy older people, uh, defined as those who really didn't have too many complaints, had the next highest glutathione levels. Um, the yellow group, uh, these are elderly outpatients. These are older people that need to visit their doctor on a regular basis uh, to get checked up, to get their medications refilled, um, doing not so good. And finally, that red box are older people in the hospital. A perfect correlation in older people with glutathione levels and their level of health and wellness. Great study. And of course, what about the rest of us that are feeling pretty good? Is, is raising glutathione going to make us even better? Well, here's a study here, actually two studies that we've done using the Immunical. Uh, the first one was in athletes, uh, where we took a, a, a group of um, university students, um, fed them either a placebo or a Immunical uh, starting at the beginning of the summer, had them go through uh, identical training routines, brought them back in the fall and measured them for uh, strength and endurance. And what we demonstrated was that in the group taking the Immunical, which raises glutathione, they were between 10 and 15% stronger. Uh, again, I need to put this into context. What, is, what does that mean? Well, in the Olympic games, in the vast majority of competitions, the difference between the gold medal and the poor slob coming in sixth place, whose name nobody will ever remember, is usually less than 1%. So a 10 to 15% increase <laughs> is, is really quite remarkable. And, and after we published a study, boy, uh, we, we drew the attention of everybody, uh, team owners, athletes, uh, organizations, uh, and on and on and on. And now, uh, uh, if uh, Scott and I were to watch the uh, Olympics on TV, uh, we'd be able to point to the athletes and go, uh, he's on a Munical, she's on a Munical. <laughs> um, uh, Canadian Olympians, American Olympians, British Olympians, Kenya, Poland, and, and, and on and on and on. And we, we didn't stop at young people. We, we went ahead and repeated the study in an elderly population. And in this elderly population, we improved their strength by 10%. Again, in context, what is a 10% improvement in strength in an older people? Well, when we get older, we're afraid of two things, mental decline and physical decline. Uh, the mental decline, I, I don't need to get into, you, you all appreciate that, but the physical decline is just as much a reason as often as mental decline for older people to lose their independence. So a 10% difference is between being in bed and being in a wheelchair, between being in a wheelchair and using a walker, between using a walker and using a cane, between using a cane and playing with your grandkids in the backyard. 10% is actually uh, a very palpable difference. So um, that's just a brief introduction uh, to, to glutathione. Um, a little bit we touched upon uh, uh, health and aging. Um, there's so much more that we speak about uh, some of the, um, in fact, most of the major uh, disease processes in the Western world uh, have articles on glutathione, uh, both in um, prevention and treatment. And I, I welcome you all to, to uh, check out those uh, addresses at the bottom of the screen uh, for more information. And with that, Scott, well, I've got some questions I will leave it, you. send it if back you, over to you. If, if you. if you're still with us there for a minute, uh, Dr. Goodman, there's a couple of questions come through. Could you take those for us? Uh, let's give it a try. 
Okay, so I've got one from uh, Jilly in the UK. She's asked, uh, is there a standard test for glutathione levels? Uh, what shall I be asking my doctor to look for? Yeah, those, those um, Julie's looking into the future. Uh, right now, there is no standard test. Uh, you can find glutathione measurements available online, uh, but they're terribly inaccurate. Uh, doing a good glutathione um, blood test is, is, is actually technically very difficult. And it, it costs probably between, a good one will cost between 200 and 400 bucks to do. Um, so when, when, when we do our studies, we actually set up a special corner of the laboratory and do it ourselves with a highly trained technician. Uh, we, we need to get the blood while it's still warm. Uh, you, you don't just measure it just in the blood. You got to spin it down and take out the white blood cells and measure it in the white blood cells. So it, it's, it's a pain. But uh, given the importance of glutathione, I, I, I like every once in a while to pull out my crystal ball. And I think that we're probably within about five years uh, where um, these techniques will become uh, easier to do and price will come down and your doctor will be measuring your glutathione levels uh, every year as commonly as he or she measures some, um, cholesterol or red blood cell count. It, it, it's going to come. It's going to come because it's so important. Right now, it's not available. And, um, and, and it's unfortunate. Um, I, I still think there are many, many practicing physicians out there that are not uh, cognizant about glutathione. But again, that's changing because of the vast amount of information appearing on, on PubMed and in the e medical literature. Now, I just wish that doctors read more of the literature, except they're usually too busy and overwhelmed taking care of the floods of patients and walk-in patients in their waiting rooms. So I can't really blame them that much. Well, the next question is, can you overdose on immunocal? What, what's too much? And, and does the body, what does the body do with the excess? Uh, the, 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 the immunocal is a, um, it comes from a natural protein. And, and I underline the word natural because the, the only way that it's going to work is if we can get this protein out of nature with as little disturbance as possible. That's why we use the term undenatured whey protein. So what happens um, is that you're eating this protein. The only problem that can happen uh, is if uh, you are limited in the amount of protein that you can eat. Now, there are some people that are challenged. I mean, somebody with kidney failure, um, a lot of the times they're told to take a, a maximum daily dose of protein. Otherwise, it starts to tax their, their kidneys. But uh, other than that, it's not an issue. Uh, the issue is that it is, um, it's, a, it's a difficult substance to, to, uh, uh, to get from nature. And the, probably the biggest harm that you'll do by taking too much immunocal is spending more money than you need to. <laughs> but, okay, it's, so but it's, it, not, it's not dangerous. No. no. And, and in fact, okay. I, I can I, I can say that quite quite liberally because um, the immunocal shows up in in two textbooks here uh, on the other side of the pond from you. In Canada, we have a book called a CPS. In the United States, there's a book called a PDR, Physician's Desk Reference. And what these books have are all the drugs that doctors can prescribe. But in there is this one odd entry, which is not a drug called Immunocal. And it has the indications, the contraindications, the adverse effects, uh, the warnings and all of that. And, and you'll see that really it's it, the it's just extremely safe thing to take. Mm -hmm. you, you said you're a family doctor these days. So what was it that actually drew your attention to glutathione in the first place? Ah, well, I, uh, I guess I, the last thing I did in clinical medicine was family medicine, but my original specialty was emergency medicine. Um, I was uh, in academic uh, medicine, uh, um, University of Calgary. I was a chief resident at Emory University in Atlanta, and I was a residency um, uh, training director and undergraduate director of emergency medicine at McGill University, which is, I think, the best 
Medical University in Canada. <laughs> People in Toronto might argue, but, um, and I, something happened to me, Scott, uh, which uh, I'm looking at you and some of the other faces I see on the Zoom program. If something happened to me that happened to you, um, I turned 40. <laughs> and uh, w w an emergency physician who's 40 years old is kind of like a professional athlete that's 40 years old. You know, it, it, it's time to look for something else to do uh, because it's just very difficult between not just the stress, uh, but the shift work and the physical demands. Um, uh, you know, you, you, you do get really tired of it. And so um, I went from emergency medicine into family medicine. I went from a situation of, of controlled chaos uh, to being locked up in a room with a single other person who had the audacity to ask me questions. <laughs> See, in the emergency room, usually they're unconscious or in too much pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people are asking me, you know, the, the Dr. Gutman, what's the best diet? Dr. Gutman, what kind of um, nutrients, uh, supplements should I take? Uh, what kind of exercise? Uh, and uh, Scott, one thing that, that uh, doctors hate is feeling stupid and uh, how many times in the day can I can I shrug my shoulders and my ego didn't take a beating so uh, I had to learn about all these things I had to self-teach myself about supplements and nutrients and exercise and and all the things that are a focus of this call today and um uh one day uh one of my patients come in comes into my office and uh um He's all sweaty and his eyes are bugged out. And he says, uh, Jimmy, uh, I got something here that uh, is going to decrease the aging process, uh, take care of cancer and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and kidney disease and heart disease. And he said, whoa, mm -hmm. it sounds like you're, you're reading off of a can of snake oil. Mm -hmm. How can one substance possibly do that? And his answer to me was uh, a thud on my desk. And what that thud was, it was about 20 pounds of published literature and uh, it was on glutathione. And he said, uh, Jimmy, you're going to go home and you're going to read this. Uh, most of my patients don't talk to me that way, but this guy happened to be a former boxing champion. So I took him seriously. And uh, <laughs> uh, what he managed to do by leaving me this pile of articles was absolutely ruin the next three months of my life. Because uh, I couldn't stop reading them. Um, I was canceling clinics. I was up at night. Uh, my wife was on my back, um, and uh, I just I couldn't believe what I was I was looking at. It was it was all about glutathione, and and it was embarrassing because I didn't know about it, and it was exciting because it had such incredible potential, enough potential that I had to. Uh, jump on board and I changed my life and career again. I started studying glutathione at that point. Well, that, you know, it's really, I'm uh, just going to mute the bill. There we go. So, I mean, absolutely fascinating. I mean, from my perspective, I, I only discovered about it in July this year. So, you know, the fact we have it in our bodies and it's essential, as you say, a master antioxidant, it's, it's certainly something we should all be aware of. And clearly, you know, certainly in the UK, my experience that most doctors haven't got a clue what it is, you know. Uh, it's, it's quite they will, scary. Though. They will. Uh, they will. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess they should do. Uh, but yeah. uh, how, how to up it, how to, you know, without taking any uh, drugs that are going to have uh, contraindications, as you say, you know, to be aware of this product um, through the medical journals is fantastic. So thank you once again for joining us uh, all the way from there. Looks, the weather looks great behind you. Yeah, it's actually, uh, <laughs> it, it hasn't snowed yet. It hasn't snowed yet. It will soon. Appreciate you coming on. Please stay with us.